What were you when Jesus called you? What's the verdict? Most Christians are nobodies. God looks at us and sees the weak of the world. God looks at us and says, you're low and you're despised. And that is what qualified you for my great salvation to break into your life. The very thing that qualified us to be recipients of his mercy was the fact that we were what the world said was foolish. We were weak. We were not impressive. There was nothing in and of ourselves that earned the incredible salvation that we have experienced. That's not what drew God to us. It was His amazing kindness. Our achievement, our human achievement, our human ability, our human status has nothing to do with our salvation. We have zero bragging rights before God. God in His holiness, in His sovereignty, in His incredible, unsearchable wisdom, devised a plan of salvation so that there would be no human pride and boasting in His presence. That's why He chose the means of the cross. The seemingly weak and foolish and shameful thing of a man dying on a cross would be the very power and wisdom of God to bring hope to this dead world. And in the same token, who did he choose? Did he come to earth and and look at the, the best and the brightest, the fastest, the smartest, the most impressive? No, he turned human wisdom on its head. He chose uneducated fishermen. And he chose the outcasts despised and he gave hope to African American slaves and he gave hope to people throughout history who the world has rejected and the world thinks are worthless people like us and so really regardless of our past regardless of our upbringing our status, the point is the same for all of us. The things that this world says are important about people are not the things that are important to God. If you want to love and treasure and live in accordance with His gospel, you cannot embrace the world's values and measurements for others or for yourself. None of those things contribute to our eternal salvation. Only having Jesus matters. All worldly wisdom is ultimately man boasting about himself. And so you can ask that question. What, what is this idea? What is this philosophy? What is this concept? What is it encouraging me to put my trust in and to boast in? If it's anything other than the grace of God in Jesus Christ, it is worldly wisdom that will ultimately be proven foolishness by God. Imagine that day when all of humanity is arrayed before God Almighty, before Jesus Christ, who will judge the whole human race, billions and billions of people who have lived on this planet from the beginning of human history, all there before God. The kings, the Caesars, the presidents, the philosophers, the rock stars, the servants, the poor, you name it, every race, every generation represented on that day. And what this passage tells us is that as those billions of people are standing before God, there will not be a single person that steps out of that throng and says, God, look at what I accomplished. Look at what I did. There will not be a single mouth that will boast in man on that day because all of the strength and all of the so-called wisdom and achievement of man will be seen 
as utterly meaningless when we stand before God Almighty. And on that day, we will all be aware that our salvation was not because of anything we accomplished, not because we were superior or better than anyone else, but as Christians, we'll be there not boasting in man. Oh, but we won't be silent on that day, will we? Because we will be boasting in Jesus Christ. And isn't it kind of the Lord to strip away from us all of those other empty boasts? He doesn't take them away from us because he he wants to leave us shamed and feeling worthless. No, he wants us to see our worthlessness so that we can cling to his amazing grace and salvation. He wants us he wants to give us something that is worth boasting about. And that's what we have in Jesus Christ. That message passage tells us he is our wisdom god has made jesus christ our wisdom and what does that mean he's our righteousness our standing before god is is only possible because of christ's righteousness and his death for us he is our sanctification he's the one that's working in us to change us and to conform us to his image he is our redemption our redemption isn't found in any human being it's not in a political party it's not in some new technology or advancement that man makes our redemption is in jesus christ he is our wisdom he's the only thing that we have to boast in Presents on the box.